Good morning, everybody. So thank you all for joining us today. You know, at many universities, the president delivers a state of the university of address that highlights last year's successes and sets the stage for the new year. With less than 100 days serving as your president, I'm continuing my active learning about the many accomplishments made possible by our faculty and our staff and our leaders, including the advocacy and the support from our Board of Governors. Therefore, today will not be your usual address. What rather, what I'd like to do is to continue the conversation that we've been having since I arrived on campus. I'd like to share my thinking about how we can expand Wayne State's approach to student success by cementing the bridge connecting college to career for our students. You might remember when I arrived, I asked everyone to share with me the things that made them proud to be a Wayne State warrior with my favorite QR code. Now, there were so many thoughtful and enthusiastic responses from our faculty, staff, students, and alumni. And thank you all who wrote in to share your thoughts. One of my favorites was from Professor Eric Ash, the acting chair of our Department of History, who wrote, we are probably the single greatest engine of social mobility in the region. That's what I love most about this place, that we serve and educate those for whom college was more of a dream than an expectation. We change lives as all good universities do, but the lives we change are not the obvious ones. The engaged responses from our warriors certainly have informed my initial understanding of our campus and even boosted my positive impressions of our academic community in the last 100 days. They reminded me of why I am so excited to be here and lead this great institution. What's most obvious from what I heard and I've seen firsthand since I arrived is the critical role that Wayne State plays for our city and for our state, a model for the US. This bi-directional, mutually reinforcing, linked relationship that Wayne State has built with our Detroit metro community is so special and so unique. Wayne State is truly in our community. We work for our community, and we do so with our community. Wayne State is a premier urban public research university. Our contributions have been impressive, whether it's advancing health and science, driving social well-being and the economy, elevating everything from education and humanities, arts to entertainment. Most importantly, Wayne State has improved the quality of life of so many in countless communities, especially those who too often have been overlooked, have been disadvantaged, or marginalized. This institution has been a beacon of access and opportunity, enabling so many to make their mark in the world and make it a better place. We have been a critical driver of social and economic mobility in our Detroit metro and beyond. Now, okay, what does social and economic mobility really mean, though? Fundamentally, it's about generational change. It means that Wayne State is a university that truly can take you to a different place than where you started, spawning a legacy of impact into the future. It means that we make it possible for diverse families to thrive and for communities to prosper. Over the many generations since our founding, we have positively strengthened the fabric of our Detroit Metro. In fact, Wayne State has been vital to its success. Now you might ask how? Our lasting contributions as a university are imprinted in the region through the hard work and achievements of our outstanding alumni, our graduates. From college to career, they are our change agents. Wayne State's most tangible and enduring impact on this city and on the lives of so many others. Day to day, our graduates make deep and broad contributions to their communities as family members, as workers and employers, and as leaders. The successes of this university are tremendous, absolutely tremendous. And one thing that has impressed me about our warrior faculty and staff is you come here because of our mission and we are better because of your impact. You continue this work every day because there is always more to do, and you are never done. You dedicate your days and years to students who have historically had doors closed to them and who are here to learn from you and benefit from your support and care. As a university, though, we are not one to rest on our laurels. We want to do more, 
And as the world continues to change at an accelerating pace, the truth is the world needs us to do more. This spirit, this dedication is so obvious and so inspiring to me and actually is a real and unique advantage for Wayne State now and into the future. In my mind, when I think about our moment in time, there are really two forcing functions that are particularly relevant for us to think about today as we prepare students to go from college to career. The first is the ongoing need to renew public confidence in the value of a college degree nationally, and particularly in Michigan. And the second driver is the power of our students. OK, I'll start with the first. Headlines in every major newspaper recount the large drop in the public's confidence in higher education. For example, a recent poll of Michigan voters by the Detroit Regional Chamber found that only 28% said college education is worth the money, 28%. Now, OK, I can already hear it. Before we academics start jumping into the details of the survey, who was surveyed, how was the question asked, and start in our minds to discount the results, let's suspend the critical deconstruction for just a minute and just think about it. Three out of every four people, roughly, question or are not sure that we deliver value for our students or for our society. They're not sure that we deliver impact or benefit relative to that cost that learning and knowing and being able to do is really critical for individual success or the success of families or our communities. To me, that is simply stunning. If you think about these results with Michigan's declining college going rate, which is down more than 10% in the last five years, as well as the demographic cliff of substantially lower numbers of high schoolers, it's imperative that we listen and we consider these results. We have a responsibility to ensure that we not only maintain and expand this university's impact, but that we also reverse these trends. So you might ask, how do we then more clearly articulate, demonstrate, and deliver on our full value? We must start by acknowledging the changes around us and embracing the idea that we must respond to them. Our communities and families are depending on us to lead in advancing social and economic mobility for the students they entrust to us. Our state invests in us via our annual appropriations because it trusts us to deliver value to its citizens. We must show that we are and that we continue to be worth the community trust and worth the public's investment. If we listen carefully to the public skepticism, consider the nuggets of truth, and be honest with ourselves, there are things that we can refine. There are things that we can do a little differently to perhaps deliver more value, to prepare our students in college for what lies ahead in their future, in their careers, in the 21st century economy. This is what I mean when I say cement the bridge connecting college to career. If there's one positive highlight from the pandemic, it's that universities are filled, filled with smart people who figure things out and get things done. Who would have thought we could accomplish what we did on such a short period of time? It's because we're dedicated to and we care for our students. After my first 100 days here at Wayne State, I firmly believe that if there is any university that is prepared to honestly consider, to adapt, and to evolve, it's us. Our talented and dedicated faculty and staff are here to be that engine of opportunity for so many who have historically been excluded, to propel them to a different place than where they started. I know that with this sense of purpose, Wayne State is truly unstoppable. We can and need to continuously adapt to refine what we do so that we can achieve our mission by better bridging college to career. That's my message today, and that's my message moving forward. We must evolve and continually strengthen what we do we can build on our achievements, which are considerable, and we must also listen even harder to our communities. We must embrace the spirit of innovation to navigate the accelerating changes ahead. The resulting opportunities are right here before us. We must build the capacity to identify and respond effectively to our students and our stakeholders' unmet needs, and then fully leverage and invest in our people and our systems to realize them. In my mind, that's why higher education has been around for a 1,000 plus years, because it has continually adapted and evolved. 
Make no mistakes, the changes around us are consequential, and they're also varied and uncertain. Artificial intelligence, personalized medicine, flying cars, cancer-killing T-cells, da-da-da-da-da. We truly are at the cusp of a transformation. And that's all the more reason to focus the talents, the capacity, the resources, and the investments of this great university to respond to these changes and to lean in to the evolution that they require. We have already made so many transformative changes in access and affordability that resulted, for example, in one of the largest and most diverse incoming classes ever at this great pluralistic university. 20% identify as members of the black or African American communities, 10% from the Hispanic or Latino communities, and 15% as members of the Middle Eastern or North African communities. Regardless of their backgrounds, one commonality among our students is their unique talents, assets, and determination to learn from and work with and be mentored by our world-class faculty who are truly second to none. Thanks to all of your hard work, retention and persistence and graduation rates have hit national benchmarks. More students are earning their degrees than ever before. Are we done with these efforts now that we've hit this? Each step really just a step in promoting a just and equitable society? Of course not. We will not rest until equity gaps are closed and every student has the means to come to Wayne State, stays here because they belong, and succeeds here by earning their degree and then launching their career, what comes next? This brings me to the second forcing function of, in our college to career conversation, our students. On one hand, I discuss the need to adapt and evolve in order to demonstrate the value of higher education and of a Wayne State degree. On the other hand, we have an incredible group of students, students with great accomplishments and even greater potential who make this mission, our mission, both necessary and possible. In my first 100 days, I'm more convinced than ever that each of our students deserves the very best from us. They've worked so hard to get to Wayne State's open doors. In fact, some of the assets that they bring have been honed by overcoming the very challenges in their paths. At Wayne State, then, these talents are honed even further through engagement with our faculty and supportive staff. Talents that then can be deployed when they graduate, launch their careers, and pursue an even brighter future. This is how our graduates reflect Wayne State's tangible and enduring impact on this place and on the lives of so many others to come. Let's be honest, though. Are we doing all we can to connect what our students learn in and outside of the classroom? Are we aligning their college experience as a whole with their aspirations for what comes next, not just their first job, but the decades-long career that lies ahead for them? Are we intentionally cementing the bridge connecting college to career? To fully embrace our responsibility as a top-tier public urban research university focused on student success, our agenda must center on the pivotal role we play in driving prosperity for our community. Our alumni, corporate, small business and community partners, the state, the city of Detroit, are relying on us. They're relying on us to better prepare students who are looking to take their place in the broader community and to improve the quality of life for those we seek to impact and serve. We need to expand our reach, extend our idea of student success, so that we are thinking about what comes next the very first day that students arrive on campus. Wayne State has the unparalleled opportunity to be the best university for social and economic mobility as we articulated in our strategic plan, our moment in time. Wayne State is blessed to be born from the pioneering doctors 155 years ago in Detroit a city of makers and doers, a city on the move with bold visions and an unparalleled entrepreneurial spirit that invents and reinvents itself. We are the university that's in and for and with this city. And by listening a little bit more, thinking creatively and, con and then continually bringing our community into the conversation from day one, this university can do something special that most can't. We remind the world of the, we can remind the world of the value that colleges and universities bring to their communities. 
we can prepare our incredible students to be even more incredible graduates with meaningful long-term careers and a commitment to serve others. In short, we can intentionally cement the bridge connecting college to career for the betterment of our students, for our communities, and for our future. Now, today's conversation kicks off the start of a strategic institutional initiative to do just that, to intentionally cement the bridge collect connecting college to career. Now, as a university, we all know that the best way to start any effort is through a little bit of learning. So today what we'll do is you'll hear from our students and alumni themselves about what in their Wayne State College experience facilitated their early success from their perspectives. So now I would like to introduce our participants for today's discussion. I had the pleasure of meeting our students and alumni since I've, so many since I've arrived. And simply put, our students are incredible. They're hardworking, they're smart, they're engaged, they're creative, they're determined. And they're unafraid to meet and conquer the challenges that lie ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce each, and they'll come up and join the stage. Uh, Simon Morani, a 2020 graduate with a BS in marketing and a minor in computer science. Simon is currently the Associate Program Manager of Public Affairs at DTE Energy. Gabrielle Rush is a current junior pursuing her bachelor's with a dual degree in public affairs and urban studies and a minor in economics. She plans to graduate in May 2025, and I have no doubt we will see her then. Um, Aliana Shakun graduated in 2019 with university honors and three bachelor's degrees in journalism honors, history, and political science. In 2022, she graduated with her Juris Doctor from Wayne State as well. She's currently an Associate Attorney at Plunkett Cooney Law. Rafael Ramos, originally from Mexico City, Rafael holds a Bachelor's Degree in Biomedical Engineering from RPI and a, ma and a Master's in Bioengineering from Syracuse. He is currently in the MD-PhD program at Wayne State School of Medicine and is working towards his doctorate in Biomedical Engineering. Haley Bocomino earned their Bachelor of Health Sciences and their Doctorate of Physical Therapy in 2022. They completed multiple clinical experiences, including at DMC's Rehabilitation Institute of Michigan, where they are now a physical therapist on track to complete their residency in less than three months. Marie Hawker graduated from Wayne State in 2009 with a Bachelor's in Economics. In school, she participated in three study abroad experiences to France, Poland, and China, Marie is currently employed by the Imaginable Futures, isn't that cool, um, a global philanthropic investment firm as a principal. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Gabrielle, why don't you tell us a bit about how your Wayne experience is helping you or helped you prepare for your career and your future after graduation? Okay, so I have a little bit of a non-traditional story. Um, I moved here two years ago from Chicago, and I didn't go to high school or college right after high school. I did real estate school, and then I did community college. And I found out about Wayne State through a symposium event that inspired me to pursue higher education. So I'm currently studying urban studies and public affairs with a minor in econ. I see myself being a public servant here in the city of Detroit. And Wayne State has offered many experiences and opportunities for me to get involved in the city, which I find is invaluable, um, and that not many other universities in Michigan do, especially here in Detroit. So my opportunity being an intern at Tech Town has allowed me to get involved with um, the with the Detroit ecosystem and Wayne State's ecosystem, getting involved with faculty. And the, facu <laughs> and the faculty we have here is excellent. They go above and beyond, and they make me feel like I'm not just a number, but I'm a student that, uh, that matters and that I have a valuable career and future. Um, and they have just been invaluable to my professional success, my personal success, my academic success. And I want everybody to know that we have amazing faculty, we have amazing peers here, amazing students, um, and amazing opportunities and programs like Tech Town, like getting involved in career services for our students and for our community. Wonderful. Thank you. And, and Rafael, what about you? Why don't you animate your experience and story? Yes, um, so um, the way the MD-PhD program here at Wayne State works is it's a two for two system. So we start with uh, the first couple of years of medicine and then we jump over to our doctoral dissertation, then go back ideally to finish our medical degree after, after eight, nine years. So committing to a program uh, obviously takes a lot of thought because we're here for a lot longer, even for someone who, for example, were to 
do uh, their four-year undergraduate and even their four-year of medicine here at, here at Wayne State or here in Detroit. Um, so when I was choosing a university, I definitely needed to make sure that I went somewhere that uh, where I could work and service the community that I wanted to work with. I'm Hispanic, I'm, I'm Spanish speaking. Being able to come to Detroit allowed me to do a lot of work in Southwest Detroit with a lot of the Latina community that lives there. But also, uh, ideally, there was, a good, uh, there was a good balance of interdisciplinary research given the fact that I'm a biomaterials engineer by training. Um, the fact that I'm able to, that I was able to rotate in a couple of labs and merge those backgrounds uh, was fairly unique. Um, something that's fairly, that uh, a lot of people, that flies under the radar but is very critical is the fact that for someone who's pursuing an MD-PhD, uh, in coming to Wayne State, we're able to get our doctoral dissertation in any discipline. Uh -huh. So typically when you, when, when you do this kind of work, you typically have people who are going into translational neuroscience or cancer biology. I was able to do it in biomedical engineering. We have people in our program who are able to do in, who do to do their doctoral dissertation in computer science while also serving out in the community and like learning um, learning primary care or chemistry or anthropology. Um, what that means on a training standpoint is that when we have journal clubs, the the degree of cross pollination is phenomenal because the fact that you have people from so many from so many disparate backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So I'm very grateful that I've been able to find my home here. And that's where you find innovation. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. Haley, tell us, was there any faculty member that's been particularly helpful in your time here? I just kind of want to echo what some of my other um, fellow panelists have already said, is that really here you're not just a number. Um, one of the things that really drew me to Wayne State's physical therapy program was how small the class sizes were. Um, when I was looking at potential physical therapy programs, I noticed that other universities in Michigan had quite large class sizes, upwards of double, triple the amount that Wayne State did. And here, out one out of 36, which was amazing to me. Um, as a person from a small school, my graduating class had about 100 people in high school, and I didn't want to get lost just being another number. I think that really highlights kind of why this particular faculty member was so important to me. Um, Melissa McCourt was a TA at the time um, when I started PT school, and it was my first or second semester in PT school, so she couldn't have known me very well, but again, it was a small class size, and she looked at me and said, you wanna do neurologic PT, don't you? And if anyone is a PT, or knows anything about PT, you don't typically go into physical therapy to work in neurology. Everyone's an athlete and got injured and wants to work with athletes. <laughs> Everyone wants to be the person on the sidelines of the Pistons game. So anyway, so that was probably the worst thing she could have ever said to me at the time. Um, and I shut her down very quickly and, and told her that I was absolutely not interested and that she was barking up the wrong tree. Respectfully, of course. Um, but she did not give up, and each semester she dutifully asked me again, like, hey, have you changed your mind? Have you given it any thought? And over time, I found, looking back at my experiences, um, everything that really inspired me and got me up in the day and got me through class and kept me motivated to keep going had some sort of basis in neurologic PT. Um, and I'm very type A. So it was very difficult for me to change course and kind of give in to that fact. And it took me a lot longer than it should have. Um, but now I found a new inspiration to pursue those experiences to see if it was really right for me. Um, I had a couple clinical rotations at the Detroit Medical Center right across the street from Eugene Applebaum. Um, and really that kind of solidified it for me. I had some experience in neurological physical therapy, or I just, I just couldn't, couldn't put, it, put it back down. Um, I went to bed thinking about it, and I, I woke up thinking about it, um, and I knew for sure that that was something I wanted to do. So I went into school the next day and told her, not only was I interested in doing neurologic PT, but I was interested in pursuing a neurologic PT residency after physical therapy school. And she was instrumental in helping facilitate that, that relationship and that connection with the Detroit Medical Center. And now I can say that I proudly worked for the Detroit Medical Center as their fourth neurologic physical therapy resident. 
And Melissa McCourt is my coworker, and every day in the morning, she reminds me about the time I told her that I would never become a neurologic <laughs> physical therapist. <laughs> That's wonderful. Aliana, tell us a little bit about your story and what experiences were most valuable for you. For sure. Uh, so I actually um, uh, immigrated to the United States with my parents when I was two years old. They're both registered nurses. And education was always a very important thing in our household. We immigrated because um, my mom got a job here and she had an H-1B visa and she wouldn't have been able to do so if she hadn't had an education. So as soon as we got here, I knew that um, it was my job now to kind of carry the torch forward. They put in the work to get us to this country, so I was going to put in the work to get us to the next step. Um, so college was a very big deal. Um, when I was choosing colleges, what really stood out to me at Wayne State uh, was at the time I had wanted to be a journalist. I wanted to be a reporter. I wanted to be buzzing around. I wanted to be in the know. Um, so I wanted to double major in journalism and political science. Wayne State had a really great Journalism Institute of Media Diversity program. Yes, it's it's a phenomenal <laughs> program. I have owe so much to it. Alicia Nails is the director. Um, I got in with a gym scholarship, and one of the requirements in the program is that you are to complete an internship every semester, uh, very much driven by the support of alumni, because we have a lot of great alumni working in a lot of the awesome media organizations in Detroit. Detroit's a phenomenal news town. There's always something going on. Um, and so right off the bat, I was able to hit the ground running because of the support of the program and that is so much beloved and supported by the alumni. I was very much encouraged um, to get involved in the student newspaper, the South End here. So um, the practical experience came right away. Um, I was able to intern at the Detroit Free Press, our Detroit Magazine, Metro uh, Times, Metro Parent. Um, I did a couple national internships in New York while I was here. Um, one was at the Democrat and Chronicle of Rochester, New York, and then the other one was at Inc. Magazine in New York City. So I was in newsrooms in Michigan and in New York getting so much hands-on experience, and everywhere I went, there was someone from Wayne State that was rooting me on, like cheering me on, giving me support, giving me resources. I got to build a lot of the skills, um, like interviewing, telling a story, um, getting along with people from all different walks of life, investigating, and then eventually um, when things started winding down and I was graduating a bit too fast, um, I took on another degree um, because I was connected uh, with uh, Dr. Irvin D. Reed in the Honors College. And uh, one of my journalism requirements was to take history courses. Um, I really liked my history courses to the point where some of my history professors were like, are you a history major? I said, no. <laughs> and they said, maybe you should be. Um, and then finally, I did a study abroad program um, with uh, Dr. Reed and Jennifer Hart to go to Ghana. And I went into it um, as a journalism major, kind of stepping into a history program. Um, but we got to go observe the elections in 2016 in Ghana, um, compare it to the 2016 elections in the United States, which was also a very volatile and interesting experience, to see that in, you know, intercontinental um, phenomenon happening and some of similar themes. Um, but after that experience, you know, Dr. Hart was in the history department, Dr. Reed was in the Honors College, and I was sold. I was going to be a history major, too. Um, so I took that on, um, also just because I couldn't help myself, and also because it bought me a little bit more time to figure out what I wanted to do when I graduated. Um, and at the end, although I really loved my experiences in newsrooms, what I also really enjoyed was just that fundamental skill of talking to people, connecting to people, telling stories. And I happened to have interviewed quite a few lawyers while I was writing my stories. Um, and I really liked what they got to do. I was so often in the position where I was, you know, the sword, uh, you know, advocating, telling the stories, but I liked the idea of what they were doing, which in many cases was being the shield, advocating for people in a different way, protecting them in really uncomfortable situations. And then just practically speaking in my life, I have a younger brother that's got special needs and journalism is quite a volatile field in terms of 
just turn over and things like that. So it really made sense for me to kind of take the skills that I had learned and transition it into um, another career pathway that also really complemented those interviewing skills and storytelling skills. So law school was a very natural transition and something that I was also interested in just from my experiences. And when it came time to choose a law school, Wayne State was a very obvious choice. Um, I had gotten so many practical experiences in undergrad and so many great opportunities to do everything I wanted to do. Same thing happened in law school. Hit the ground running, started uh, programs that I was passionate about. Journalism for media diversity was all about DEI incorporating it in the newsroom. So I wanted to see if there was an equivalent in the legal community here at law school. So I worked to start something called the journalism, um, the Wayne Law Diversity Coalition which brings together all of the different multicultural or affinity organizations in the law school, Asian Pacific American Law Students Association, African American or Black Law Students Association, Middle Eastern Law Students Association, bringing us all together because there's not enough of us. So when we're connected and we're sharing resources, it prevents information that's so vital about scholarships and opportunities and events from slipping through the cracks because there's a real tendency of, oh, we know that this is going on, but another organization may not know about it because we live in a world where there was Zoom and COVID and people weren't communicating. So we brought that together, started a campaign called the Lawyers Look Like Me campaign, and now we sell the t-shirts um, at the law school. It's still ongoing to this day since I graduated. Helps raise money for the organizations, and that money can be used to support students that are so often first-generation law students, um, so they can help pay for books, help go to events, help go to conferences, um, and offset any cost. So things like that, all taught to me by Wayne State, all possible by Wayne State, um, and really part of my experience that I bring into my practice as a, law, as a lawyer now. Thank you, Alia. So Simon, what advice, what advice would you give to students who are here right now at Wayne State? Share a little bit about your story. Uh, yeah. um, so I think our generation is all about experiences, and I think that's why um, I'm always so vocal about my pride for Wayne State, my, my warrior pride, and, and, and how much um, how proud I am to be a warrior. So uh, something that you said during your speech was that uh, Wayne State is in Detroit, Wayne State works with Detroit, and Wayne State works for Detroit. And I love that so much because um, Detroit, to me, I would consider as my playground. So to my friends in between classes, I'm like, hey, guys, let's go play. They're like, what do you mean play? I'm like, we have all of this in our backyard. Like, let's go explore. Let's go make some experiences. Um, so that's why my main advice is always to be engaged, experience, and get involved. That's what made my time here most memorable, um, most influential, and gave me all of those lessons that um, make me the professional that I am today. Um, so starting out, uh, I didn't know, well, I was first in the pre-health field as a pre-pharmacy student. So that I did that for a few years, and in that I would be involved in the pre-professional uh, medical society. So when I was in that student organization, or when I was in that discipline, I joined the student organization that was um, involved with that, and one of the main ones I saw was PPMS, the pre-professional uh, medical society. In this organization, we have things like our networking banquet, and um, these types of events allow you to uh, meet different department um, heads, such as the dean of the Eugenia Applebaum College of Pharmacy, um, such as people that are on the medical admissions boards, and we are here prepping for this event, setting up this event, so imagine that type of experience that we're getting um, with that, along with the experience that we're getting by attending that event ourselves. Now later on, when I transferred on to um, computer science, um, went into the uh, engineering student senate, and from there, uh, I turned out to be their webmaster. And why I did that was because I saw how how much that I enjoyed being involved in student organizations, and I wanted to pay that forward and teach that to other organizations. So I see Heather here, actually, who um, we worked closely together with when the new Get Involved program started to, um, started to be implemented, and that's where everybody signs up, that's where everybody tracks their attendance, that's where we do um, polls and, and whatnot, and that's what keeps everything organized and keeps everything um, tracked so that we can better progress our, our organizations themselves and better get our students involved. And because I love myself getting so much involved, I wanted to get others involved. I would always tell my friends, I'm like, hey, um, I see Quidditch happening <laughs> in, <laughs> next to the rock outside. Let's, let's go play some Quidditch. Like, Simon, what's wrong with you? I'm like, why not? Try something new. Um, so 
From there, uh, went into making computer science my minor, and then went into the business school making marketing my major, and I joined the Mike Illich Marketing Association. Um, from there, I was their chief operating officers, where I, I also worked on um, the Get Involved program as well, and then along with my own personal interests. So there's all those student organizations within your own field that have those specific disciplines, and then there's things that you want to be personally interested in. For me, it was the Lebanese Student Association, which um, to this day is one of the most active student organizations on campus. And wh while I was president of this organization, I made it a point to have at least one cultural, one social, one professional, uh, one academic um, event per month. And that, as you can imagine, is a lot of work, especially while struggling to figure out what kind of department you want to be in. So, <laughs> so um, with that, we would have one of the biggest events, uh, I would say, within Lebanese students and all students in Michigan, that was our annual LSA student gala. And that happens once a year where we get um, each of the six university or each there are six universities that usually get um, together, Michigan State University, University of Detroit Mercy, all of our neighboring universities, University of Michigan Ann Arbor and, and University of Michigan Dearborn and Oakland University. Having all of these different presidents from all these organizations and sitting together in a room to talk about how to plan an event, especially with Lebanese people, it's not that, e not that easy. Um, so having that type of experience gives you not only like, you have these technical skills that you learn like in your classes, right? But, but also you learn these social skills, you learn how to talk to people, you learn how, how to collaborate, you learn that everybody has their own opinions, but at the end of the day, when you go to a vote, and everybody votes for one thing, that's, you, you stand unified as that, that one team and, and you stick to that. No matter what your opinion ended up being, you respect, you respect those people and, and you learn to have that one solid opinion, that, that one unity. So I, I learned a lot of lessons from all these student organizations and I always preach the, the one thing that, that you don't want to just go through life uh, existing, right? You, you want to go, you want to make sure you're living. You don't want to just go wake up, you go to class, you go home. You want to go actually make an experience out of it. So that's why my, my biggest advice is always to get involved. Thank you, Simon. I appreciate that. Now, Marie, what can we do to better help students who follow you? Thank you, President Etsy. And good morning, everyone. It's really good to be with you, with you this morning. Um, I believe that to the extent that you can really begin to or continue to elevate the resources and the opportunities um, that really expose students to life after the university. I think that's really, really critical. And I think if you focus on doing, doing that and being really, really intentional, I believe that 28% will go up. Um, I have to say that for me, Wayne State University's study abroad program is the bomb. Like it is, and I'm, I'm aging myself. <laughs> I'm saying the bomb here. But uh, Wayne State has the most fabulous study abroad program that there is. And um, I was able to take advantage of three study abroad opportunities, one to France, one to Poland in 2007, and one to China in 2008. And it was the very first time in my life that I realized that I was more than just the narrative that often comes along with being a young black woman that grew up in Detroit. I realized at that point in time that the world was truly my oyster and that I had something that I could, could, that I could meaningfully contribute. Um, from that experience, I also learned how to listen. I learned how to connect with people who perhaps did, had different philosophies from me that you know, were of different races, um, just that had different backgrounds. And in that space, I also learned how to elevate my own voice and to communicate. And um, so, so all to say, I think it's absolutely critical that we continue to elevate those opportunities so that students know that this is available to you. And for me, I didn't let the fact that I did not have the money at the time to go on my first uh, study abroad trip to Poland, I ended up raising the money. I said, I don't have it, I'm gonna raise it. I'm gonna kick the door down, I'm going. Um, and my second study abroad opportunity to France, there was a, um, I forget, her woman, her name was Michelle Reeves, and she offered me a scholarship to go and, and, and um, uh, to go on my next trip. So, so all to say, I think, provide as many resources as possible to ensure that students have that opportunity to have a seat at the table and see themselves as something more than what their five mile radius may allow, particularly when you have so many students coming up in the city of Detroit going to this university. I think this is a very, very special place um, so just find it within yourselves, within your own positions to elevate those opportunities for students. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, let's join and thank our students.
don't know about you, but when you hear all that, is that not just totally inspiring, right? Doesn't it make you feel good for all the wonderful work at Wayne? And thank you all, you students, alumni, for joining us today and for sharing your experiences and insights. They'll be invaluable to help us to help future students. It's been such a pleasure to chat and learn a little bit more of you. And I wish you all the best as the semester wraps up, although you all probably aren't as attuned to the semester calendar as our current students. So thank you all very much. Okay, so let me just close with a couple of remarks. So our plans to intentionally cement the bridge connecting college to career, they certainly start with panels like this and start with the learning that we heard here today. But they don't end there. Um, I leave you with a couple of thoughts and early plans about this initiative. I will be charging a campus-wide task force chaired by Vice President Ahmad Ezzedine to develop a framework plan with recommendations for the needed infrastructure and investments to chart this expanded student success approach. As you heard today, our Wayne State students learn from outstanding faculty in the classroom and graduate with cutting edge, cutting edge knowledge in the discipline of their study, or in some of these cases, disciplines with three degrees. Okay. Um, today's environment, though, requires a broader set of marketable skills to be well prepared. We heard things like skills and problem solving, critical and creative thinking, interdisciplinary teaming that we saw evidenced over and over again, communication and leadership, all that can be gained by these learning by doing experiences. And not just for undergraduates, but for all students at all levels. These experiences certainly can include internships or co-ops, but also mentored or off-site learning experiences group project-based and other solutions-oriented learning, clinical and applied research in healthcare, education, and the full range of spaces we have here in our city. They also include global learning opportunities that tackle challenges, for example, climate change or sustainability. We also have opportunities to leverage certificates and skill credentials and competency-based credit for prior experiences. All of these can be oriented to specific learning outcomes that prepare our students for what comes next for their career. Through a multi-year initiative, Wayne State has the special opportunity and an obligation to leverage our amazing Detroit assets, whether it's industry, large and small, business startups, nonprofits, community organizations, global and government employers. We are so fortunate to be in Detroit with so many assets. And if we leverage these together so we can partner more intentionally with us in this work to achieve our expanded student success goals that our students deserve and truly pave the bridge connecting college to career, we will need to start welcoming, welcoming these partners into our thinking and planning from the very start. Wayne State has many of the pieces already in place, but we need to connect these pieces so that the whole adds unique value to the individual parts. That will allow us to be the best public urban research university for opportunity, an institution that truly propels students and families to a different place than where they started. Blurring the lines amongst our internal silos and sharing the work together is not always easy, but it really is needed. Success will rely on and depend upon collaboration from academic affairs to student affairs, research to government and community affairs, corporate and foundation relations to alumni affairs and economic development, faculty, staff, and students. When we discover how much we can accomplish together with our talented and committed faculty and staff at the center, in my mind, the sky is truly the limit, but we do have to come together intentionally each of us needs to be ready and excited for the conversations that will follow today for how we, Wayne State, can best connect college to career. Your input is essential. It will take everyone's good thinking to realize our collective goal. We will need to plan, make a plan. Uh, we will need to chart the ensuing action steps for a multi-year implementation. Today just sets this process into motion starting our paving the bridge to connect college to career. On the journey of my first 100 days, I've had the privilege to get to know many of the faces behind the great story of this university. 
my understanding of and appreciation for what has been accomplished is even more deep than when I started. I know we need to get our story out. I hear you. Many of you have told me that over and over and over again, and I couldn't agree more. And we've already taken some early steps towards this goal. But we must also take concrete steps to ensure that our impact story continues, that the future remains bright for our current students and our alumni, represented so ably by those who are joining me here today. That's what college to career is all about, so that we can ensure the opportunities for prosperity are here for generations of students and learners to come. Thank you all very much for joining me today. I look forward to working with each and every one of you in what lies ahead. Thank you. And thank you all.